I wanted to create a video and I've created a couple more like this uh, for how to stay warm in the deer stand. And I don't want all this clothing right here to scare you off. Um, I'm going to talk about the basics um, and I'm going to expand on those basics. Uh, I want to make sure that you stay warm. I've hunted, I first started hunting in Michigan in 1985. And you can imagine all the squirrel hunting, rabbit hunting, small game hunting I did before that. I was 15 at that time. And um, so I, I've been hunting Michigan cold winters going back to the, you know, when I was 13, 12, 10 and, uh, in, in Michigan. And, and how cold you ask, you know, everyone talks about it. You know, I, I said it was 10 degrees. Well, it might've been, you look and it the real feel was 10 or whatever, a wind chill was 10, but I'm talking like I've sat in temperatures below minus 30 degrees, actual Fahrenheit temperatures, not including the wind. And I've sat on some windy days when it's been minus 20. So I know I've sat in minus 40, 50 with the wind chill. And there's ways that you can stay warm. You really can. And I want to discuss those ways, whether you're hunting when it's 35 degrees, 40 degrees, and you have that chill, that first chill. Um, right now, it's, we're in the middle of the rut. It's in uh, mid-November, mid towards the end of the rut, and it's starting to warm up a little bit. But we've passed some really brutally cold days. Um, my wife, Diane, I've really had to go over this a lot because... Diane, as a newer hunter, I basically have to tell her what to wear. And she's starting to, you know, she sat maybe uh, 70 times in the last two years. And, but she sat quite a few times lately where it's been literally uh, five degrees actual temperature when she went out. She's had three mornings in a row just in the past week where the temperatures didn't get above 12 or 15 by the time she came out of the stand five hours after she was sitting. So she, this is just sitting five hours and then having to endure that cold. So I'm going to talk about this. Now, obviously, if you're familiar with Sitka, this is all Sitka clothing. This is not a Sitka commercial, though. What I mean by that is there's, I'm going to tell you what I use with Sitka clothing, but I'm going to tell you how to do this on a budget because I know not everyone out there can afford Sitka. I look at it like with hunting clothes, hunting clothes are an investment. There's something, if you buy quality clothes, they should last for decades. People think nothing. I went out with some friends last night, a uh, um, buddy of mine, Bowles. I'm sure on bowling night, if it's a couple nights a week, he'll spend 40 bucks, 30 bucks with between wings and beer and bowling, whatever else. And, uh, you know, people think nothing of doing that and doing that times 35 weeks during the season and, or, or, you know, have a really nice bass boat or whatever. But there's really people that just can't afford a lot of those luxuries. But if you can, you look at it as an investment. If you, if you look at quality clothing, and you look how long it's gonna last, you during, for how many hunts you're gonna have it, for decades, being able to pass it down. I had some quality clothing that I bought in the early 90s that I bought pieces. I had a lot given to me for Christmas presents. And I've used Sitka for uh, four seasons now. 2016 was the first season. And uh, I was able to pass down those clothes in 2016 to, my boys and because they were quality clothing that was purchased in 1994 1993 92 no rips tears i was able to pass that clothing down to my kids and they're still using it now so good clothing lasts for a long time but staying warm in the deer stand for me you have to look at five different categories and you know these are going to be obvious but i want to go over them how you can truly stay warm and that's feet hands core, base, and head. I'm gonna start with the feet. And I am diabetic. I have people, I've talked about that. Um, and before anyone says, well, it's a you know, disease of lifestyle and whatever else, um, when your pancreas is failing and you need insulin, that's not a disease of lifestyle. It's not a choice. It's not something I can work out for and eat better food. I have to have insulin every day to survive and, and to live. And, my circulation is not that great in my feet at times. And so I need, I noticed like the last two years, especially this year, my feet get really, really cold. And so I have, I wear rubber boots all the time. I've talked about, I like to tuck my pants in the inside, but when it's brutal cold out, you'll see my pants right down to here. I'm still wearing, I still have rubber down the bottom. I still spray down. I still try to eliminate my scent trail coming in. I still have, try to have clean pant legs going up, but I even want that extra insulation going all the way down to my foot right here. Sometimes that's not enough. These are lacrosse boots or 1600 grams insulate or whatever insulation that they use. So it's very good insulation. These are warmer. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sponsored by lacrosse or anything. I just, 
I like these boots and Diane has them too. But sometimes the boot isn't enough. I'm wearing a thin layer, a moisture wicking sock, and then I'm wearing a heavyweight layer on the outside of that. A lot of times my favorite socks have been the wading socks that you buy out there that are long. They, all, they go up all the way to my knees. I know my legs are stubby, but um, so wearing the, both those layers of socks. I also use foot warmers. And what we found is um, I use Heat Factory. That's the best ones that I found. I'm not even gonna talk down on the other ones, but Heat Factory seemed to work the best. And we've used the foot heat factory ones, we find they just don't work. And so, or at least in the really brutal cold that we're sitting in. And so we'll actually take uh, the small hand warmer. And Diane came up with this over the last few days even where she took the small hand warmers, she literally taped them to the inside of her, uh, on her inside sock, you know, next to her skin, where she's putting that on the outside of the sock, on the top of her toes and the bottom of her toes. And then she used packing tape that we ship our books in um uh to hold those in place and then she pulled her heavyweight socks over and she said it was awesome she she said that worked really well so um another thing i have in this right here i have a stratus pant it's a wind stopper pant and this is something going back to when we didn't have a lot of clothes and we didn't have high quality clothes 80s 90s we had to layer a lot um if it was brutally cold i'd take an insulated pant that's on the larger size has a belt with it. This one has a cinch strap, the Stratus pants, my one of my favorites. And we would get up in the stand and my friend Tim and I, it was 2003, we came out here for a four day rut hunt. It was brutal. It was eight to 10 degrees actual temp with wind in the morning while we're getting ready. And then it didn't get above 30 and we sat dark to dark for four days and we just got cold and we didn't, we didn't, the forecast didn't show that. And back then you didn't have the great forecast models we do right now. And so we're stuck with what do we do? We have our mid-season kind of weather clothing. We didn't have our warmest stuff. Well, what we did and what helped us survive that, that sit is we had insulated pants. XYZ brand, doesn't really matter what it is. And we literally pull them over our boots up to our knees. And then if we had a belt or a tightener for the waist, we would shut those. And so we would layer the excess leg under our feet. So for one, that kept the cold air from coming through the bottom of our boot. And two, it surrounded our boots with another layer of insulation. And a lot of times, like the Stratus pad, it's got a wind stopper in it, so it's not allowing wind to get in. We throw a couple of heat packs in there and down each leg, awesome way to stay warm. And it literally helped us survive. Cause it's fairly easy if you're using, you know, things we'll talk about with feet and head to keep warm. If you keep your feet, your hands warm, or your hands and your uh, head warm, in your core, then, um, then as long as you keep your feet warm like that. And that, that was a great way to do it. So those are some tips for, for keeping your feet warm. Um, you know, I like a good base boot like this. There are warmer boots, but I'm not kidding when I say this, we have a, an average 35 to 40 minute walk uphill to our best stands that we're sitting in during this cold weather, whether they're gun season, we wanna get in by bedding areas, or whether it's the rut and we wanna get near bedding areas in the morning. So wearing some really heavy boots that, that weigh seven pounds and going up a hill or eight pounds, whatever they might be, isn't necessarily an option for us. And so we're trying to find where we can get in light and nimble and then warm up when we're on stand and, and try to survive the, a brutal sit. Next thing, core. That core area, I rely on heavily uh, vests. And I have one around here, um, a pretty, pretty good vest in here. Pull out one of my favorite jackets here and this vest right here. I'm wearing vests a lot. This is Fanatic vest right here, but I have some thinner ones too. I have the regular vest and I have um, a vest that uh, it's called the Shacket from Sitka. And to me, that vest along with bibs, I wear bibs when it's cold all the time. And it's not just because they, they keep the air from coming around your waist, it's because they come up here around your core. And so by the time you add bibs and a vest of some kind, you know, under your jackets, then boy, your ability to stay warm in the, in the deer stand is incredible. And what's interesting about that is I'm going to say, you know, I, in the past, you know, I didn't have this stuff. And so I relied on, it was some type of wind stopper brand, um, some, not, not a particular brand, but it was a wind stopper jacket and vest. And I wore those two in combination. So they both zipped up here, right here. So I had double layer on my neck. I wore those for 15 years and they were a cheaper, kind of off-brand type clothing. So if you can't afford this stuff, and I, I truly think, um, 
I believe the Sitka is the best, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, and there's good reasons why. But if you can't afford this stuff, there's still options. You know, that vest, wind stopper, making sure the wind can't cut through you, that is so critical. If you just have a plain old fleece vest and the wind's whipping through there and it's not being stopped, then it's doing you no good. And, and having a couple layers of wind stopper vest and jacket for that brutal cold time is so important for your core. And by the time you add the bibs, awesome, you're, you're well protected. Now your head, head is so important. And, and I have a variety here. This, this thing looks warm, you can tell. It's Gore Wind Stopper. So that means no wind's getting through this. If you can tell, I have, I have some videos last year where I was wearing an orange one of these for my muzzleloader hunt where I shot a buck um, in the secondary rut. And I was wearing one of these, it looks like a 10 gallon hat. People made fun of it even, that, which is fine. Um, I was warm though, it, but uh, you can see this is very warm. It's very thick, it's got fleece lining, fleece on the outside, very quiet. And so this hat is awesome. And I wish I knew the names of the hats better, the caps and everything else. Um, this hat for hunting has been incredible. If you wanna have a fashion shoot and show some pictures up on Instagram, then maybe this hat isn't for you. It's got the fold down Elmer Fudd type ear flaps. It's got a great brim right here, but it is literally Gore-Tex uh, hat. The same fleece lining as this hat. Um, very quiet outer right here, and I wear this all the time. And, uh, and Diane wears her all the time. It's a great hunting hat. Um, so very, very warm. And this is my all-around go-to hat. But even when I have warm hats like this, we have a Stratus beanie. Stratus beanie is, is a wind stopper. It's a little bit cheaper. But I love that because I'll use it just like with one of these right here. But when it's brutal cold, I want to show you a couple things here. The hat isn't everything for me. In fact, I'm wearing a Fanatic hoodie right now. And if you see from the inside of the inside of the, the hood right here, it comes up right around here. So this is a layer of protection right here. But when it's brutally cold, it's not enough. And you can see here's my camo version with the elevated two. It's got the, uh, the same thing, you know, it's a Sitka Fanatic hoodie. I wear that almost every time in the woods because it's my face mask during light season, early season. And you can even wear it without putting the hood up if you just want to wear the, fa the face mask. But again, that's not enough. So what I'm doing a lot of times, this is a heavyweight um, face mask. And so going back to the 80s, uh, my grandma knit me one like this because I had to have something on my face. And so I'm putting this on first. Then I'm taking this hood a lot of times. If it's really cold, I'll pull the face mask out from this and put it over this one. But I'm also putting this up so I have the protection of this hood. I'm zipping this all the way up and it's over this. And then I'm adding this or this. And so three layers of protection and your head will never get cold. And you know, maybe it seems excess, but if you truly are sitting out all day for gun season, you truly are um, hunting during the rut and it's cold weather, you'll be thankful that you're adding all these layers to your head. And maybe it's not a real cool shot for Instagram, um, but you'll definitely uh, stay warm. And this is what I've had to do to literally survive. I've had hunts where I've hunted for, it's up in the UP of Michigan. I can remember a very brutally cold morning and I got back to the house after five hours, six hours of hunting. I was sitting during the rut. I was really cold and it had warmed up to minus 16. So here it's 11 degrees or 11 o'clock, bright blue sky, sunny. The temperatures had warmed up considerably and it's still brutally actual Fahrenheit temperatures cold. And this is how I've been able to survive that. So the head, so, so important. And what's nice about this is it's layering. So you'll get used to, you'll, you'll find that Maybe you just need the heavy face mask and one of these hats for in the 30s or 20s. Uh, maybe even you only need all these layers when it's in the teens, 10 degrees and less. But uh, very, very important. And, and then maybe, like in the early season, I'm just pulling the face mask out and putting it right here and then I have a hat on. So, um, and, and that's it and able to keep warm no matter what temperature, you can have all these layers. Now, one thing that you guys have seen me talk about all the time and I'll, I'll tell the story again. You know, this is a incredible uh, hand warmer tube. My first hand warmer tube, because our fingers would literally freeze um, back in the mid eighties was my grandma sewed me, or my mom sewed me one. They had different wool layers 
I saw one at Dunham Sporting Goods in, in Southern Michigan and I couldn't afford it. And so uh, my mom just got some pieces of wool, sewed them together, something like this, put a safety pin on it and that's what I wore. And it was so important to have all those layers and be able to, and then it advanced to where I'd take a, a Gore-Tex gator and um, a leg gator that's supposed to keep the snow out. I'd wrap it around my hand warmer tube. So then I had, you know, in the 90s when I could afford those, then I wrapped that extra Gore-Tex layer to protect me from wind, rain, everything else. And if I was sitting all day in the rain in the 30s right now, I'd probably do the same. But this one actually has wind stopper in it. So it keeps the wind out. You can see how it comes down to a V right here. I carry my grunt tube, extra batteries for the camera, extra batteries for my trail cameras. Uh, sometimes I bleat cans in here. I just wear thin gloves. Because if I have this on right here, I can throw two large heat factory heat packs that last for almost 24 hours. I can throw them in here with these thin gloves and I can stay perfectly warm in the most brutal of temperatures. And it's got wind stopper so the wind's not even robbing uh, the heat out of there. So this is critical. I wear this all season long. It doesn't matter if it's uh, warm or cold out because I carry so much garbage in it you know, to the stand. This is basically my backpack. I don't like backpacks. I like being a minimalist when I hunt. And so... This helps you do that, and this keeps my hands warm all the time. The only time I, it, I'm not warm is if it's five degrees and I forget my heat packs. Then that's when trouble starts because you have to keep those tucked in there. I actually keep my phone in there. I keep it against me, closest to me, and then I have my hands, and then the heat packs are on the outside, so that heat just keeps uh, filtering in there, keeps the form, uh, phone warm too. So head, hands, feet, layers, pretty easy to keep warm your core, and then the next thing that I really look at is, you know, like I said, we have those long walks up to the stand, um, we have the long walks up to the stand in the morning, and we're getting really sweaty. The last thing I wanna do on a 30 acre parcel, on a 25 acre parcel, on a par parcel with only eight acres of woods, is I get to that stand, and let's say I have all my stuff in a backpack, and I'm getting sweaty, 40 minute walk in and it's uphill 400, 450 feet in elevation. And that's what it is. When we go out, Diane and I think are gonna go out to Pennsylvania in a couple of weeks to hunt their rifle season opener. And those are seven to 800 foot changes in elevation. So you get sweaty, you get heated up. So if I'm going into a stand on a small parcel that I'm trying to not spook the deer on, I don't wanna take all my stuff, put it into a backpack. And there's a few reasons for that. For one, I'm, I'm sweating through any shirt that I have, any piece of brush, anything I touch, the bottom of the stand, the bottom of the handrail is going to be full of sweat because that's what's going to come through there. I'm going to saturate. I'm going to touch everything. I'm going to leave a magnificent scent trail into my stand. And you do that a few times on a 30 acre parcel with a few stands and you just blew up your parcel for two to three weeks for any mature, but any respectable mature buck that was going to be in the area. If I had a backpack with all my clothes in, for one, I'm sweating. I'm leaving that trail through the woods, touching anything. And, and then I get to the base of the stand. You put all your clothes on there at the base. And if you do, can you imagine how much scent you're leaving at the base of your tree stand and the deer comes through two hours later, three hours later, three hours after dark, smells that scent, it's gonna smell you and that stand's ruined. And you can't afford to ruin more than one or two stands on a 30 acre parcel and the whole property's done. And so I, I truly look at it like that. I, I, you, I don't get five, eight chances at mature bucks every year. Um, the bucks that I wanna shoot, I get one or two chances, I capitalize on them or not, and I can't afford to blow stands out, and especially some of those better stands. So do you, get, do you get ready at the base of the stand and leave a bunch of scent, make a bunch of noise? For me, I wanna get to my stand, climb up the ladder immediately, and start settling in for the hunt. Um, even adding a camera bothers the heck out of me. I mean, it takes another five minutes. It's not a big deal. I've, I've added that to my routine. But I have this panic setting in that I wanna to get to my stand, get up there as fast as possible. So if I have some mature buck wander under me during the dark or 10 minutes after I arrived in the afternoon, I wanna be ready for them and not spook them because I'm still at the base of the tree. I just wanna go right up. So it's so important to have moisture wicking base layers. Now, a friend of mine, uh, Steve, he introduced me to marine wool, uh, merino wool um, several years ago. And so I've had several brands. Sitka has their brand, there's other brands out there. I love my Sitka brands because they're built, um, they're created with a hunter in mind. They're not like skin tight. You know, I can wear them. They have a long tail so you can tuck them and they're very, very comfortable. I wear them around the house like this is a comfortable shirt, really comfortable. Plus it zips up. I mean, they're made for hunters. They're made to layer with everything else. And so it wicks moisture away. And a lot of people say, well, how do you stand the sweat? Well, within a half hour, 45 minutes, you know, when I first, Dylan has a lot of pictures of me video. When I get to the stand, I have my hat off. 
I have everything opened up, zipped down to here, and I'm just letting that heat come out. And I look at it like once I'm on stand, it doesn't matter if I have clean clothes, whatever I use, gel, scent, whatever you use, you're going to blow something downwind anyway. So I don't worry about that scent once I'm on the stand. But I contain my scent in the clothing I wear to the stand and not leave a scent trail, and that is so critical. Base layer is, is so important. Now I'm going to talk about really quick, uh, you know, again, there's a lot of different varieties of clothing out there that you can wear. Um, I wear my base layer. These are the new Fanatic bibs from Sitka. And then I have the uh, Fanatic jacket right down here. Now, these are critical. There's other important foundation pieces that you can buy. But if you're gonna buy something from Sitka, I would buy this, these, and this, that, that Fanatic hoodie. Because this has the face mask built in, and these are your outer protection. This will cover you for, I wear this stuff when it's 30 degrees in the 30s to 40, and then on down to below zero. And so that covers me and keeps me you know, really warm. Um, and, and so if you have those outer pieces, then you can build from there, get them for Christmas presents, whatever you can do, um, they're awesome. And so you can just get that. Now there might be something else where you already have some quality outer layers. And then you start building within, start building with the vest, the shacket, uh, things, the windstopper stuff that you can keep on the inside, bibs so that you keep your core. And then you build out from there to your hands, head, and feet. And if you're using good base layers, then that'll help keep the sweat away no matter what type of stuff you have on the outside. Um, so that's, that's a base layer that I use. Now, if you want to go a little bit more economical and you're in a, a warmer area, Equinox hoodie. Um, I picked up this year. It's got fleece on the inside and I love this hoodie and you can see it's got a built-in face mask it's got the hood that comes up and what I like about this is it's you know less expensive than this stuff right here but if you pair it with something that you should have as your core anyways this is a wind stopper nice. fanatic wind stopper vest and so I love this um, it's got the gore infinium it's really thin um, great for stopping not only the wind but insulating you too and so I pair this with wearing this over that right there this is great to wear with just this hoodie you can wear the hoodie for the season something like this where the equinox I found if I was wearing that down to the high 20s that kept me very very warm and I paired those with the stratus pants they're less expensive than the fanatic uh, the fanatic 2 bibs and so this this worked really well I'd wear sometimes sweats under this Sometimes my sweats and the, um, and the uh, base layer with the merino wool. Sometimes I just wear the merino wool, but you could add layers to keep very warm with this, this vest, and this jacket, and that'll keep you warm down into the 20s. So a very, very good system um, to use. Bottom line, there's a lot of great stuff out there, but you have to focus on your head, your hands, your feet, your core, and then that base layer. There's a lot of ways to get it done, but you have to get it done effectively. I'll tell you a story, and, and I get to see, you know, I work with hunters around the country. Last year worked with about 90 in 14 states. We talk about everything. We talk about people asking me about Sitka, the clothing that they use. Something interesting came up, and I believe that Sitka is the best clothing out there. That's why I use it, period. Um, I've had other offers for other clothing company, but I wanna use Sitka. It is the best. And, and it's best because it's articulated. The sleeves narrowed down, it's built for bow hunters. And so I'm a bow hunter at heart. I use my bow during the, the gun season too. So there's many reasons I think that Sitka is the best and you could decide that too. I have clients tell me that. I have readers, viewers tell me that, that yeah, they can't afford it. You know, that's, that's one comment that I get all the time. And so I'm hoping you can piece together some base layers, either the, the Strass pants, the Fanatic vest, and then the, uh, Equinox hoodie, those are great. A little bit step down, but for brutal cold, you need this. I have uh, clients there in Northern Michigan, right up by Lake Michigan. Very cold, they average about 180, 85 inches of snow right up there. And one of those individuals in that party gets a major hunting clothing company for free for his business and his work connections. And it's a very good company. Anybody would recognize it if, and I'm not gonna say the name of course. So they get that free. And he's at a level enough where he could get his whole hunting party those clothes for free. And you know what hunting clothes they use? They use Sitka because they want to stay warm and they want to be able to hunt and actually pull their bow back and not be so confined 
and have all these layers on that look makes them look like the Michelin man. So they use this because it's specifically designed for bow hunting and hunting in extreme conditions, extreme weather. And, you know, don't take it, you know, my word, it, it, there's a lot of people who say the best, the big number one knock on it is just expensive. And I found in life, it doesn't matter if it's the camera that's shooting me right now, the gun you use, the bow you use, you get what you pay for typically in life. And there's not many exceptions to that. And hunting clothing is no exception. I hope this helped you. I mean, my whole goal is I just want you to stay warm. Whatever clothing you use, you have to focus on those basics. And those are some layering tips to stay warm. If you want to up to the hunting, uh, you know, and you, and you can afford the best hunting gear out there and, and really up your game when it, when it gets cold, then Sitka to me is, is the choice. But there's other options out there and I do understand that not everyone can afford that. So I hope you can stay warm in the deer stand this year. Um, that's my goal for my kids, my wife. Um, if I freeze, that's another story that I, that I just didn't pay attention that morning, but I really want to take care of them. And this is how I do it, by focusing on those core and those foundation areas to keep yourself warm. Bottom line, if you're not warm, you're not having fun in the tree stand, and I hope you have a great time and a great set, especially as we're ending into the late season this year.